So this time we have a setup that is a cube, and then five of its sides are all grounded, so they all have a potential of zero. And the top plate has a potential of, of V0, so we're trying to find the potential inside the cube. And so once again, using separation of variables, our answer has to look something like this. So once again, I'm not going to prove this. There is a pretty good example in the book. You can check it out if you want to see how they arrived at this step. But using separation of variables, we can we are quite certain that our answer looks something like this. So the next step is to find out what these constants should be, so L and C and all these. And we do that by using the boundary conditions. So the first boundary condition we can consider, so let's consider when x is equal to 0, so when we're on the yz plane, so on the back here. So on the yz plane. So on the yz plane, we know that the potential has to be equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0, the potential has to be 0. Well, sine 0 is equal to 0, but cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So in order for the whole thing to be equal to 0, regardless of these values, because when x is equal to 0, this whole thing has to be equal to 0, the only possible solution is when b is equal to 0. So essentially, we can get rid of this term. So the second case we can consider is when y is equal to 0. So on the on the x z plane, so on this plane over here. So once again, using the same argument, you can see that this term must go away because cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So we've gotten rid of that. And so for this term, we can do something, we can do something about this. And we can consider when z is equal to 0. So on the bottom plane, on the xy plane, when z is equal to 0, we know that the Potential has to be equal to zero as well, and when z is equal to zero, you, we get something like e plus y, you know, e plus f, right? And so you get an e plus f, two constants multiplied by all this stuff, and then we want to, to control the condition so that regardless of the values of whatever we have here, this whole thing has to be equal to zero. And that is only true when e plus f is equal to zero. That's why we know that e is equal to negative f. And so this expression here, we can actually write this down as something like this. k squared plus l squared z. And then you can see that this kind of resembles the hyperbolic sine function. So note that the, these uh, the, there should be a 2 outside here because the hyperbolic sine function is defined with a 2 at the bottom and with uh, the denominator. But because e is an arbitrary constant, I can just absorb the 2 inside, so I'm just going to still write e over here. So this term can turn into something like this. So let us just conclude for the time being what we have right now. So we have some constant c. I'm just going to stick with using c because I like using c for the constant. And then hyperbolic sine function k squared plus l squared z. So right now we know that our answer has to look something like this. So we still have three constants, l and k and c. So another boundary condition we can test is when x is equal to a. So we can test this plate over here. And we know that when x is equal to a, once again the potential is equal to zero. And that is only possible when sine k a so know that, note that uh, we're testing the case where x is equal to a. So in order to get the whole thing to be equal to 0, when x is equal to a, sine ka has to be equal to 0. So ka has to be equal to n pi, where n is equal to some integer. And so we see that k is equal to n pi over a. And then using a similar argument, we can test this side over here, when y is equal to a. And by the same reasoning, you see that sine LA is equal to 0. And then by the same reasoning, we know that L is equal to some dummy variable m pi over a. So this dummy variable stands for all these integers again. So one is using n for one, m for the other. So now we found two more constants. So our answer turns into something like this. So sine pi x over a 
sine n pi y over a, and then the hyperbolic sine function n squared plus m squared pi z over a. So the final thing we need to get rid of is this constant c over here. And that we can get rid of using this final boundary condition. That is this top plate over here. So we know that when z is equal to a, when z is equal to a, we know that this function has to be equal to v naught that is given to us. So we can incorporate this using Fourier's trick because uh, once again, a uh, bit due to the nature of Laplace's equation, we know that the sum of all possible solutions is also itself a solution. So let me just write this out. So the sum of all possible solutions is also a solution. And so using this, we can, we can actually control our C so that this condition is met. And that can be done using Fourier's trick. So we're considering the case where z is equal to a, so I'm not going to write everything out again, so I'll just change this. So in this case, this z will become an a, and it will cancel out with what we have at the bottom. So we have something like this. So this top expression is going to be equal to v0. And then we can find c by using Fourier's trick. So we're going to multiply both sides. So I'm going to do it on the right-hand side first. So I'm going to multiply it by n pi x over a. So let me put a prime at the top to note that it's different from this dummy variable here. So it's equal to some constant. m prime pi y over a and dx dy. So we're going to do this integral to both sides. So this is done on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, these, uh, these symbols are going to be attached to the end as well. And then you know by Fourier's trick that the only surviving terms will be the cases when n is equal to n prime and m is equal to n prime. And all the other ones are going to be equal to 0. And so in the end, only the n and n prime terms survive. So we keep the constant. And then we also have this constant here that stays. And then the integral with for x and y, they're going to both be equal to a over 2. So we get an a over 2 square. So it's too much to write. I'm just going to, so I hope you understand what's going on. So I'm just applying Fourier's trick. So you can see these see this trick in many examples in the book. So there should be a tiny prime over here. So don't forget about that. So now all we have to do is to evaluate this integral, and then we'll see what c and n will be. And then for convenience sake, now I'm just going to uh, resort back to using n m. So after we've passed through that step, it's really not, not important what symbol we use, as, as long as it doesn't conflict with what we have here. So integrating sine this uh, n pi x over a from 0 to a, so I'm not. I'm just gonna be quick with this, so you can do it out yourself. But I can tell you that the answer is gonna look something like this. So this is gonna be the answer. So let's just rewrite what we have here. So we have a squared over four. So I know this is getting kind of messy, but that's how these problems are there quite a lot of work. So on the right hand side we have v a squared n n pi squared. And for these two terms you see that when n is an n and m, when both of these when this is a odd number, cosine odd number times pi, that's going to be equal to negative one. So you get one minus negative one, that's going to be equal to two. When n is an even number, so say for example two pi cosine 2 pi is equal to 1, right? So it's going to be equal to 0. So all these terms are going to be equal to 0 when n, when either n or m are going to be an even number. So the only terms that survive are when both n and m are odd. And then when that happens, you get 
two of these twos and they multiply together and you get a four. So you get a four here. And that is the condition when n and m are both odd. So this is very important. So with a bit of simplification, the a squares cancel out. You have two fours here, so you get a 16. So we come to the conclusion that our constant c and m is equal to is equal to this. That is only for when both n and m are odd. And so combining everything back to our original solution, you will get something like this. So only odd numbers. So you get is it a sine hyperbolic function? Pi z over a. So this is the part in terms of z. And then we have the x term. So sine n pi x over a divided by n. And then a sine m pi y over a divided by m. So this is our answer.